Hello, everyone. The Alfred Ostrowski here. And in this recording, I'm going to be giving a quick demo of leveraging the Amazon Redshift. So Redshift is a petabyte level data warehouse, similar in nature to Google Cloud's BigQuery. We're going to be using the serverless implementation, and we're going to be accessing the test data that they give you that is pre-initialized with the data. So we won't be going through the ingest. So let's get started. I'm assuming that you have an Amazon account and nothing else. So we're just gonna go in from the ground level, go zero to 100 and immediately go through the process of accessing the data and being familiar with the resources. One thing I would encourage, and I'm not gonna be spending time on is billing. So you should get with the Redshift a $300 free credit. This is over and above your AWS free initial credit. However, you still want to keep track of your costs as you step in. So you start creating clusters and doing any type of activities. And most importantly, inadvertently leave them up and running. You will burn through your free initial period as well as incur charges unnecessarily. So I would encourage you to be extremely careful with that. We're not going to be creating clusters explicitly, but we will have connections. I'll be deleting the connections to, once again, try to establish best practices with monitoring your expenses of being aware of the resources that you are being familiar with. So. Here I'm at aws.amazon.com and I believe I already logged in. So I just click into the console. Now, I've obviously already been to Amazon Redshift. It's gonna be under my recently visited. If you have not visited prior, it will not show up obviously. So you can, I'll assume that you haven't and I will search for Redshift. Now, my in my case, it's as it just did right here. It flashed that page and immediately jumped to serverless dashboard. It may not work that way for you. It probably just take you back to the Amazon Redshift. So I clicked over to the left, and I am going to bump up to that Redshift page that flashed just for a second there. I'm not sure exactly why it omits that. We're gonna be using the Redshift serverless. This is in comparison to configuring your own cluster, which to the uninitiated can be a much lengthier task, especially due to the fact that you are not completely, may not be familiar with all the resources available and how to configure them appropriately. So the services list is going to give you essentially a one node cluster and a very lightweight means of stepping into these technologies. So I'm just gonna to go to red shift serverless, click on the button right here that you see in the slightly upper right. I'm gonna take me to that serverless dashboard that it kind of hijacked the heading, the red shift heading page, take me in there. So here there is a default namespace work group. I'm, I'm not creating a work group, okay? I have one default that's already available and already has my test data ready to be queried right out of the box. So this is extremely convenient. And while Redshift will give you uh, the capability to attach with the driver, you do not necessarily have to do that. We're just going to go straight to the console. So the next step I'm just going to go is click into query data that you see in the upper right and let that initialize. So here it brings me to the query editor. I had a prior query, but I want to start from scratch. So I'm going to delete out my tabs and kind of take a step backwards as if we're starting from scratch again. Okay, so I have the default, which we saw on the main serverless page. And this has my sample data along with some pretty elaborate notebooks with pre-established queries that allow you to test out 
the Redshift capabilities. <clears throat> so I can click into sample data dev. I have a ticket database, a couple other databases here. And I can click just to the right of any of these three tables. I'm going to do the first one, the ticket. And that should open up my notebook. And there we have it. So on the notebook, I have a number of different queries. And in any of these, I can tab down and step through some of these. I can do the sales per event. Let's just run that and see the results. So all these are limited, so you're not going to be incurring any charges of any substance. And here we already have that result here. And it's bounded already, so you're not going to get tons and tons of data because this is this query is limited. So immediately we're pulling data from that. And again, if you're not completely um, comfortable with the queries or the data here, you can explore that at will. I can add a new notebook. And I compare that down a little bit and just do a dump on that table with three lines of code, very, very nominal. And being comfortable with this will help when we, in further demonstrations, we start loading in from CSV or ingest from an S3 uh, um, resource that will want simplified queries. So we're not going to get bogged up with the syntax of these elaborate inner joints and other operations. So I can just dump the ticket sales and do a limit on that and run that. And I can see that table right here. So, so this is a great starting point, right? I can click through here. I can explore that data. I can go and view my schema and the data and it's displayed down below. I can immediately have access to my queries. And moving forward, I can do a create on the table. Of course, I can do a command line as well within the context of my notebook. And I can do a load data by clicking here. I have a graphical user interface and I can definitely program this as well from Python or any other suite of languages, Golang, whatever your um, language of choices. And here from S3 bucket or even for from local file and load it in that fashion and set up an appropriate um, data flow. OK, so, so again, this is a great resource to get started. It's a serverless capability and petabyte level. We can definitely scale on this. But most importantly, I would encourage you to be super careful with monitoring your resources and and understanding how exactly how the, the billing occurs. Here, just to be even super explicit, I'm going to delete the connection, though I don't think that I'm really going to be incurring any charges if I just walk out of here with the sample data set. But if you create your own cluster and load in your own data and you don't delete the cluster, you will definitely incur charges. And that in and of itself is a set of tutorials or um, a lot of documentation to pour through to have a complete and total thorough understanding. So again, I would encourage you, do your due diligence and be careful so you have a positive experience. So I hope this helps. And thanks for listening. Take care. Thank you.